Hello again. So we're doing a very basic introduction to the graphs of the logarithms, and I just want to basically show you two of them. You got f of x equals log base 2 of x, where 2 is the base, x is x. And f of x equals log base 1 half of x. Now there's a few stipulations when you're doing logarithmic graphs, and one of them is that your base has to be greater than zero. It can't be a negative base. We're working with exponential functions where the base is positive, so therefore we're not going to be working with negative ones. Therefore, when we do our inverse, the base has to be positive. There is actually a, <coughs> excuse me, another stipulation behind that, and that's that the base cannot be equal to one. This number can't be equal to one. You know, what's one to the power of eight? One. What's one to the power of twelve? One. You know, it's not. It's not exponential, and then when you take the inverse, it's not going to be logarithmic. So that's a stipulation for the base. The other stipulation is, and what I like to do is I usually like to put this in parentheses when I say it, this value, when we're graphing, has to be greater than zero. That's pretty much it. And other than that, it's, it's not too bad. Now this is an uh, example of a log base 2 of x, as best as I could draw it, where there's a vertical asymptote at zero, and it gr uh, gradually rises. You know, it's always going to rise. And here's a function of x where the log is a base one half of x where there's a vertical asymptote at zero so it'll never actually approach and it gradually decreases and you can always take the inverse function of let's say you know y equals one half x to prove that out you know draw a mirror and check it out it's actually pretty cool so that said you know it is what it is so that's what we've got uh, usually students have a little bit more difficulty with the base is less than one but greater than zero people in terms of graphing because we're usually doing this now, there are a few other things that I want to point in mind. I'm not going to sit here and I'm going to graph them because I've already done lessons on that. And you could look at actually similar lessons. And it's very similar to the absolute value graph. It's uh, very similar to uh, quadratic graphs. Let's say I were to add another number afterwards, you know, like plus 2. What would that do to either of these two graphs? And what it would do is it would shift it up. It would shift it up 2. Or it would shift this one up 2. Same thing if I subtract the 2. If I subtract 2, and what happens is it goes down to, it goes down to. But that's assuming that the subtracted or the added to is after the logarithmic function. If there's a subtract to or add to inside the parentheses like this, x plus 2, well, you know, log base 2 of x plus 2, then what ends up happening is the graph gets shifted to the left or to the right. If the number is positive, it gets shifted to the left. If it's negative, it gets shifted to the right. Like a quadratic, yes, exactly, like a quadratic graph if you're actually familiar with that. Another thing that's really remarkable is that if the base is higher than 2, let's say it's 3 or 4 or 5, then what happens is that the, uh, the, the ascent, I should, suppose I should say, is actually slower. The graph would look more like this for, you know, a 2, uh, excuse me, for a, a 10. Uh, conversely, you know, like, well, let's say here's log base 10, log base 9, 8, 7, 6, and here's a 2. It actually rises faster, which is actually really cool. Same thing here. If I actually use a lower number closer to zero, what ends up happening is that the graph is sharper along here. Really quite cool. You know, like at, um, let's say for instance at negative one, it's going to be one fourth to negative one, which is four, so instead of being here, it would be right there. So that's really cool too. Now the problem is that students don't really know how to graph, they don't understand what's going on. What I tell them is, as long as you keep this in mind, it's not terribly difficult. Uh, you take the base, of f of x equals x. Basically what you're trying to do if you're making tables is you say, okay, uh, 2y equals x. Substitute in values for y and that will give you the x value. Or in this case, it's you know, 1 half to the y equals x. That's essentially what we're doing when we're graphing logarithmic functions. Same thing. If I put a coefficient, or I suppose a multiplier in front of my logarithmic function, then it increases the values by whatever that is. So if it's 2 times log base 2 of x, I first do this, and then I multiply those values by 2. It's pretty cool. Uh, absolute value would look like this. If it was, uh, you know, 2 subtracted by x, then it would be a mirror of x minus 2, so it would go like that. Well, this one isn't x minus 2, so it's not a mirror. But anyways, it's pretty cool. You can go ahead and try it out, plug them in, but I'm not going to sit there and do them. They're actually a little bit more difficult to do by the table. They're not really, but they're more cumbersome. You have to sit there and you have to plug in values for y and figure out what your x is. But yeah, that's really cool. That's like a very quick summary on inverse functions. Oh, sorry, on logarithmic functions, inverses of exponential functions. 
So remember, if your base is you know greater than zero but less than one, you're going to get this kind of movement. And if your your base is greater than one, then you're going to get this kind of movement on logarithmic graph. And then you know if there's a number inside the parentheses, it's going to shift to the left or to the right. If there's a number outside, you know plus two or minus two, it's going to go up or down. If there's a multiplier, that's going to you know uh, you have to multiply all those values by whatever that is. You know. All that good stuff. So it's pretty cool. You know, other than that, that's you know kind of a quick summary. Most students, I don't think, usually do this. They don't usually work with logarithmic graphs when they first explore them. But just in case you were wondering, you know, what you can do with them. Yeah. So with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.